Hey, what's going on, everybody? Sergeant Gallishaw checking in. So, this is for, um, of course, all my videos are for anybody, but um, anybody can watch. My videos mostly, um, I aim towards people who have interest in the service and people who um, are currently serving. So a lot of you who watch my videos might be in the military already, right? And you're just getting started. So I've been in for seven, this is my seventh year. Like I just reached seven years and I am a staff sergeant. I got promoted to staff sergeant E6 in six years. So for the people who don't know, um, all military branches have a promotion system. Promotion means that, pretty much promotion means a level of responsibility. That's the best way I can put it. So with promotion also equates to more money. All right. Uh, me personally, I think that every rank that you go up, you might as well add 10,000 to your yearly salary. So I think E2 is like 20,000. Now, this is also keep in mind, this includes um, your housing and your food because at, um, why? At all of that um is 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 put into your into your salary so put it like this if you're an e4 right if you decide to get out of the army and you want to be a civilian you have to find a job that the salary is forty thousand to be able to maintain the lifestyle that you had while you were serving so E2, 20,000, E3, 30,000, E4, 40,000, E5, 50,000, E6, 60,000. Like I said, this is including housing, so it won't look like that on your um, on your ERB, I mean, ERB, on your LES, on your, your pay receipt. This is, this is based off of if you was to transition out of the military, this is how much money you would have to make to be able to maintain the lifestyle that you have. All right? So anyway, in the army, the army is the fastest promotion branch out of all the branches. Like our branch promotes faster than any other branch. I think the air force is the slowest if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below, no issue. I'll do my research, but I believe that's how it is. As far as the army, you get your first soul in the enlisted route, which is NCOs, non-commissioned officers, the highest rank that you can attain is E9, which is Command Sergeant Major or Sergeant Major, all right? Your first four ranks are automatic. You will earn those in the first two years of your service. So after, basically, is as long as you're in the right place in the right time in the right uniform, you will, you're gonna get promoted. You stay out of trouble, you're gonna get promoted, all right? So two years, uh, two years is when you will automatically get promoted to a specialist, but if you're high speed, you can get promoted to specialist earlier on off of waivers, and that'll be within 18 months. I got promoted to specialist off waivers. I also earned the title of corporal. I got promoted to corporal, which is a very unique rank. So as a corporal, you are um, certified a non-commissioned officer. You just don't receive the pay of a non-commissioned officer. You still have the same pay and pretty much the same rank as a specialist but you are legitimately a non-commissioned officer. So I, I, I did get that rank because I was high speed. <laughs> I was high speed and I am high speed. I take pride in my job and um, I, I go above and beyond. You know, um, I'm very loyal to my to whoever I'm with. I'm loyal to my soldiers, I'm loyal to my unit um, and I do whatever it takes to get the job done. All right, so anyway, um, once you hit E4 specialist, all right. After uh, sir, after you meet the time and service, and time and grade, you will uh, you will be um, able to go to the board for promotion to sergeant. So after E four, no more rank is not automatic anymore. You have to earn your rank. All right. So to get sergeant, you got to meet the time and grade and time and service. All right. And um, the 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 first step is going to be going to the board. All right. So the board consists consists of one command sergeant major, and it consists of all the first sergeants that are in your battalion. All right. So how it should go is you know that you're going to the board within a month, 
and you'll get the, the itinerary of the study material that you need to study for this board because this is what the first sergeants and the command sergeant major are going to be asking you. So each one of the first sergeants are going to cover certain aspects of um, our ADRPs, which is our uh, Army Doctrinal Publications and things of that nature. And you need to uh, study and, and, and have a, a basic knowledge of all of these different fields, like rifle and marksmanship, physical training, um, leadership, you know, uh, mission command, things of that nature. So normally, in a perfect world, you'll have ample time to study. But I ain't going to lie to you. In the Army, you might not find out you going to the board to that week. Hold on. For me, when I was at Campbell for my E5, um, I found out I was going to the board within that month, so I had time. And I studied, studied, studied. So um, I didn't pass my first board. I'm not going to lie to you about my career progression at all. I um, I was promoted quickly. Like I said, E6 in six years, and that's that's amazing in the military. And it's, um, it's rare. Everybody doesn't do that. But I didn't pass my first board. So... Uh, the, you go into the board, they'll ask you questions about yourself. Um, they'll learn about you. And basically the board is set up to see who you are as a person and if you have the qualities to be able to be promoted to sergeant. So after you um, pass the board, you will have promotable beside your rank. So, you will, so now you're a specialist promotable, which means that the army deems you capable of being a sergeant. You have the potential to be a sergeant. So then the next step is you go to BLC, basic leader course. It used to be called warrior leader course. When I went, it was a warrior leader course. So this course is designed to teach you the basics of being a sergeant, being a non-commissioned officer. So the non-commissioned officer is the backbone of the army. We are the ones who enforce the standards, all right? We're the ones who, who, who train the core and train the future leaders, all right? We're the ones who actually do the physical. The officers, officers are the ones who create the the, the plans and um, the strategies and the things that we're going to do. The NCOs are the ones who enforce it. So that's the difference between, all right? Um, and in my opinion, officers are more like managers, all right? They're, they're more like managers. And NCOs are, floor, are more like the like the floor. Like if, if it was Walmart and you had somebody on the floor who, who leads everybody, and then you got your general manager. The general manager will be like the officer. And then the people that you actually have on the floor, the line leaders, that is like the non-commissioned officer. That's the best way I can put it. If that makes sense. So then after you pass on um, BLC, all right, now you officially qualified to be a sergeant. So the next thing is you have to get promoted um, by points. It's a point system. All right. And I'm going to break this down so it makes sense the best way that I possibly can. All right. Part two, Sergeant Gallagher, I'm back. All right. Um. So as I was stating, um, promotion to sergeant is um it's a point based system and it is based on the needs of the army okay so if the army needs uh, let's say the army needs 10 sergeants in your job field in your position um i'm a 92 alpha so let's say the army needs 10 92 alphas to be sergeant um then they'll look at the points that are current. They'll look at all the specialists who are promotable and they'll look at points. They'll look at everybody's points. So the top 10 people on that list, they'll make the point cut off at the points that they're currently at. And they'll cut it off right before it gets to the 11th person. So that way they can promote those 10 people to fill in the slot for the 10 sergeants. I know it, it kind of sounds like it might not make sense or it's just like, oh, what is going on? <laughs> but but that's how it goes. So every month on around the 23rd or the 24th of that month, the army will release the points. And then they will also release the list of promotion by name. So then the question that you might ask is um, um, how 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 does that process work? Like, how do you know? Um, what, how many of the rank that you need and things of that nature. So the army is always changing. People are always getting out of the army. People get demoted where they lose their rank. People retire. So things of that nature change daily, um, monthly. And, um, the army has a, a system where they can see how many people in these ranks 
are leaving the army, separating, transitioning, changing their MOS, changing their job, all of that. And it lets them know, excuse me, the positions that have to be filled. So as I said, they look, they look at um who's available, they look at their points, they find out how many they, they know how many people they need to get promoted. They look at the people who are promotable and the num based on the number, that's how they decide what are the promotion points for that month. They release it almost at the end of the month and they'll let they'll let you know. So you'll see a by name list of if you made the list. And if you did, you'll get promoted on the first of the, the following month. All right. Um, how to get points in the army. So you get points for a lot of different things. You get points for when you go to the range, when you get points on your PT test, you get points on going to college, the military, especially now in this time, the military is big on education and self-development and they will put systems in place and it is up to us as NCOs to enforce education for our soldiers because it is important. It's important in order for you to be a leader, in order for, um, for you to, to, to be able to lead and to be able to set examples, you have to, at the same time, uh, have self-development for yourself and, and continue to better yourself in all aspects of your life. So we promote that, we promote education. So you get promotion points for going to college. You know what I'm saying? You get promotion points for getting technical certifications. So um, you get points for uh, military education, all the military schools that you go to, air assault, airborne, um, pathfinder, uh, wheel vehicle mechanic, um, fuel handler, um, uh, forklift operator, um, generator operator, just all these different technical certifications that you can get. You get points for all of that. You get points for all the awards that you've earned, your AAMs, Army Good Conduct Medal, um, just also as you're going through your career, you earn points. All right. Now, when it comes to getting points, there's some things that you don't have control over. And there's some things that you do have control over. You have control over your self-development. So you have control over going to college. We can't make you go to college. Of course, we um, we support that and that's what we want to push for. But ultimately, it's up to you. So if you want to progress and get promoted quickly, I, my opinion, you have to go to college. You have to. And a lot of people, a lot of soldiers don't do that. They don't take advantage of the tuition assistance and go to school while they're serving. They literally, they just work and then they enjoy their lives. But you do have the few, the small percentage who serve, who, who go above and beyond. And go to college, go to college. All right, so anyway, um, you'll, so as you get the, the gist of things, you'll, you'll look, you'll see, you'll see the points. You'll be like, okay, I had that amount of points. And then you look and your name's on the list and your name is right there. Your name will be on the list. It'll be in alphabetical order and you will see your name on there to be promoted to the next rank. All right, so you made it. You're a sergeant now. So then the following, that following month, because that's the, uh, you find out like the 24th of the month prior. So let's say it's October now. So October the 24th, I look, I see my name is on the list to get promoted to sergeant. So on the 1st of November, I will be pin sergeant. When you get pin sergeant, you'll have a ceremony normally. You'll have a ceremony in front of um, the whole entire company that you're in. Um, you can pick an NCO or somebody, your wife, your spouse, your mother, anybody who is significant or important to you. You can have them come. Your family can come and things of that nature, and there'll be a ceremony. Um, your significant other, your mom, whoever it is that you decide will pin you. So they'll take off your specialist rank. Um, they'll put on your sergeant rank. The commander will speak about you and your contributions to the company. The first sergeant will speak about you and your contributions to the company. And then you'll get the opportunity to speak and let her, you know, to thank everybody and to inspire other people who are um, following behind you, who are, you know, trying to take that next step as well. And then you are a sergeant. When you become a sergeant, you have more responsibility. All right. Once you become a sergeant, it is it's no longer about you. It is about your squad. You are now responsible for other soldiers. You are responsible for their well-being. You're responsible for their promotion. You're responsible for developing them. And that's how it goes. 
all right? And you learn these fundamentals in basic training. You learn about it's not just about you, it's about the team. You know, you make yourself better, and then in turn, after you, um, why, it's not after, because you will always, as long as you live on this earth, there's room for improvement, and you will always continue to work to better yourself. As you are working to better yourself, you are also working to better and help develop other people. And they're gonna do the same thing and they're gonna do the same thing. And it's a chain. If everybody is is doing the best that they can and bettering themselves, then as an organization, we are unstoppable. So that's how that process goes. So then after you get promoted to sergeant, the next rank is E6, all right? And you're gonna go through the same exact process all over again. So once you meet the time and service and you're qualified to go to the board again, you'll do the um, you'll do the entire process over again. You'll go back to the board. Um, after you go to the board, you'll go to ALC, Advanced Leaders Course, where you'll, where you'll learn more about your job, learn more about the managerial aspect of it, because now you're, you're getting more into a manager um, type role, you know, more of an overlooker, more of a mentor, you know, once you become a sergeant. Um, and after you get your uh, staff sergeant, then for E7, Sergeant First Class, E8, Master Sergeant or First Sergeant, E and E9, Sergeant Major or Command Sergeant Major, you get looked at. And so it's no more you physically going to the board. So now you just have to, you got to you, you gotta continue to uh, do self-development. You got to continue to uh, develop your soldiers and just do the best that you can. And um, your records, your ERB, your records, is where you'll get promoted. So you'll have um, high-ranking individuals who, when it's your time, um, when you meet the qualifications and you meet the time and um, grade, time and service, then you'll be eligible for promotion to E7. You'll have um, high-ranking individuals who will look at your records. They will look at everything that you have done. They will look at your, um, they'll look at uh, your NCO yards, which are your evaluations. So once you become an NCO, you get yearly evaluations. So before the year starts, you'll get a counseling, which basically tells you what they expect of you, all right? What they expect of you, um, your performance and things of that nature. And then at the end of the year, you'll get your NCOER, your evaluation as being an NCO, all right? So these high-ranking individuals, they will look at your NCOERs, they'll look at your evaluations, they'll look at your accomplishments, they'll look at your education, they'll look at everything that you've done, all of your training, and then they'll determine if you are ready to be the next rank. And that's pretty much how the rank structure goes. And that is how you get promoted to sergeant. So uh, a few things, my advice to get promoted is like I said, self-development, continue to get your education, even though you're in the army and you're making good money, um, you know, you're making good money and things of that nature, don't stop and don't settle. Do not be complacent where you're at in the position that you're in. Continue to strive to better yourself, all right? And then based on the job that you pick, there is a career map that the Army provides that'll tell you based on your job, based on your rank, These are the. this is the training that you need to do. This is where you need to be um, as far as education in college. You know, these are, these are the assignments that you need to take. These are the steps that you need to do. And if you follow that career map, then you, you won't fail. You'll be okay. You'll be good. But that's pretty much all I have right now. Um, you all have a good day. And like I always say, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me anytime. You can hit me up on Facebook. You can hit me up on YouTube. You can hit me up on, um, you can message me or you can give me a call. Shoot me a text and I am an open book. I'll tell you everything. All right, you all have a good day. All right, let's make it the best.